What's going on today, everybody? I am going over Antiquity Quest by Grandpa Bex Games. Uh, this is a great little set collection game with plenty of cards to play with. So let's get right into it. This is Antiquity Quest by Grandpa Bex Games. Besides your player mat cheat sheet that really helps you figure out how to play the game and how to score the game, it'll come with a giant deck of cards. This deck includes antiquity cards, which are numbered one through five plus of the wild. There are six suit types that are all correlated with civilizations around the world. These are the five treasure cards. They score a little higher than antiquity cards do. They are a little more difficult to put together. And these, and these are the character cards. Each player in the game is gonna get two piles of 10 cards Put one aside, that's your cash. You'll only use that once you deplete your first hand of 10. So how does the game look? This is a set collection game. So to make it very simple, you are creating sets of cards and scoring them. To create a set, you need at least three of a type, and then you place it out on the field. A perfect set is gonna be one through five of one suit. That's gonna score 1,000 points. Getting one of each treasure card gets you 1,500 points. Getting suits together with duplicates in them are called a standard set. The antiquities scoring 500 points and the treasures scoring 750. And lastly is the mix set. That's when you have a mixture of both antiquity and treasure. These score 250. A single turn looks like this. You start by doing one of the following, drawing two cards, or taking the discard. Let's start with drawing two cards. So now I look at my hand and I have to have at least three cards to make a set. Well, if you look right here, I have one, two, three, and four. So I put these out. To make a perfect set, I just need a five. That'll score this a thousand points. Now can I make any more sets? because I can technically keep going as long as I want. This one needs a four, and we're good here. So now, after I'm done playing as many cards as I'd like, I have to discard one card to the discard pile. Now, if in the case I had a test card in my hand, and I were to play this to the discard, instead of leaving it there, Tess would wipe out the discard pile. Why would anybody want to use a test? Well, in this example, it's going to be my opponent's turn. So he looks at their hand, and they can choose to play or pick up all the discard cards. So on this turn, instead of playing one of his suits out, he's going to pick up the discard. In order to do so, the top card, you have to have... The top card suit, you must have at least two or more of those cards in your hand. In this example, I do. So I can take those cards, and I can make a suit with it. Anyways, continue play as you would and play as many cards as you like. Once you're done, go ahead and discard a card. It's my turn again. So I can't grab the discard because I only have one card. So I'm going to grab from the draw pile. And yes, while I do have enough cards to make this, I didn't choose that for my first turn. So I'm doing something else now. So what can I do? Well, I have a wild and I also have a one through four here. So I could actually put the wild down here and score a perfect set. Now put that to the side. I also have a four here to complete this perfect set. That's two sets. I'm three away from beginning to trigger end game. End game is triggered when someone has at least five sets completed and has exhausted both their hand and their cashed hands. So one more thing I have not gone over yet is the fact that you can add cards to other players' collections. Why not try to sabotage them? In this example, you could tell I'm going for a perfect set right here. One, two, three, I just need four and five. What else would I be doing? But my opponent also sees this. So he comes in and throws a two down. That defeats my perfect set. Yes, I could still get a standard set if I'd like, 
but no perfect set. So it's end game because I have been the first person to deplete both decks of cards and collected at least five sets. I have one mixed set here, two perfect sets, a third perfect set, and a standard set. So since I was the first person to deplete all of my cards, I get 500 points. Then I will calculate my points for all these sets, followed by calculating each individual card by their point value. I'd compare my stats to everybody else playing, highest score wins, or continue for two more rounds. Let's go over this one more time really quickly here. So on your turn, choose to either draw and play or match with the discard and take the whole thing. If you draw and play, go ahead and put down as many sets as you'd like, having at least three cards of that suit. And if you'd like, sabotage your opponents. Finish off your turn by discarding a card to the discard pile. Really quickly, what Nigel does here is when you use his card, draw three cards from the top. Oh wow, look how many cards I get to own at some point. Whoa. All right, so what do I think about this game? It's extremely fun. I'm not lying. It is simply a set collection game, but for some reason, I thoroughly enjoyed it. In fact, the very first time I played it, I wanted to get a feel of it before I went in, you know, taught more people and played it more often. What I did was decided I wanted to play one round with my, with my brother. So we start playing. We learn the game, start putting out our sets, start sabotaging each other's sets, and by mid-game we realized how close our score was. That's when we were like, should we do another round? And he's like, I don't know, let's just finish the, the round up and see who has the highest score. I was like, perfect, let's do that. So we finish the round up. He scores about 3,000 points more than I do. I wanted another round, even though I only wanted to end at one. So we went through the round again, gave each other two sets of 10 cards. One is a cash, one is the cards we were using. Started playing, getting a little more strategic with the situation because now I'm seeing him use more test cards. Uh, to remove the discard pile because he knew that I could collect sets and collect like perfect sets with the cards that were in those discards. And then I started using a lot more of the, the Nigel cards in order to see and grab more cards and hopefully start collecting more sets. And I was sabotaging a lot of his perfect sets and nobody was playing treasure cards in the discard pile because we realized how valuable they were. And then we went to round three, and by the end of the game, I think I won by 3,000 points. I had 25,000 and some change, and he had 22,000 and some change. And that's when we realized, wow, we wanted to stop at one, and we could not stop playing. So take that with your thoughts and consider why. Of course, I love the artwork. I really do. If we're looking at this here, let's get this to focus, baby. Um, you know, it is each civilization. We have the elephants of, I want to say, India. I know those are very valuable. I've seen them before. Uh, what do we have? Oh, well, yeah. As you can tell, we have Indian cultures on all their, like, ancient civilization um, artwork and um, like, antiques. <laughs> We have, you know, different things like ancient Asian um, ceramics. We have Greek statues, ancient like Americans, Aztecs or something. Super neat and my favorite culture of all cultures, Egypt. So of course you see here we have all our classic expectations met. Um, I, I, one more thing I do really like about this game is there's a story involved. You are working with Nigel in order to stop Tess from stealing all the ancient artifacts. You and Nigel want to put all these artifacts in a museum so everyone can see them. And Tess wants to take them all for herself. So should you buy this game? I don't know. Do you have a family that you want to get to play board games more often? It is pretty bulky. You can't really take it on the go. Um, pocket size at least. Bring it in a box and a bag, of course. That's a very obvious thing you do if you do want to play this on the go it's just set collection how do you feel about that personally i think sometimes games with just minimal mechanics but a lot of effort pays off 
for example. This is specifically set collection, and it's so much fun. And I think it's a matter of the strategy that you find involved with it. So, is this a game that you think you are going to get? Have you played other Grandpa Bex games? And anything else you want to tell me, leave in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and comment. See you in the next video.